of congestion issues throughout the county, um, study the traffic signal situation in the city of Eleven, and I'm especially concerned about it because of the upcoming 9th and 10th Street uh, upgrades and people looking for other ways to get around town. Uh, there have been some, let's call them disconnections, uh, between the linkages of lights in the, in the city. So this particular project, in addition to upgrading lights, we're going to try and get a much better inventory of all the signals in the county. And, um, and as part of that, try and get everybody on the same page and time provide for more linkages between those lights. Now, whatever I might have missed there, Tom. County initiative, get the signals to a point where they're safer, they're more efficient, they're more effective for everyone. And while Earl didn't mention it, this also includes the pedestrian phases and those lights as well. The city has several hundred pedestrian phase lights that are all incandescent bulbs. Those are going to be upgraded as well in this process. But the next phase that John and I will be working on is this inventory of all of our signals. Understand the equipment that's out there, the traffic control plans that are in place, the timing plans for the signals, and then look at improvements you can make across the board. But John, you may want to talk for a moment. You're also working potentially with, on a training program for new city staff on getting our system working better. And one of the things that we had worked with with Gannett Fleming was actually to have Bob Taylor come down. He originally was involved in the design for the city signal system. It was never fully um, calibrated to operate to the way it should. And the one advantage of the city signal system, you can actually implement timing plans that you would formulate for special events or for if we have the construction to 9th Street Bridge while that's going on and you're going to be diverting traffic on 12th Street, you can actually change the timing plans to favor the routes, you know, in fact, that you're moving traffic on. So there's some advantages to, to getting that system working well given that we have 72 and 422 going through uh, the city. The other thing to understand is, is what we're really hearing from PennDOT over a period of time, asset Bethel, Myers, Town, Mill Creek, North Lebanon, South Lebanon, West Cornwall, West Lebanon, the City of Lebanon, North Cornwall, and Heidelberg. Okay. Would the study um, get into the sensitivity of the lights when they turn for bicycles and scooters, that sort of thing? Uh, that's going to be a difficult one. I know what you're talking about. We've gotten comments from you as well as a few other bike people. Um, what she's talking about is when you pull up to a signal, you know, and you're waiting there, um, you know, the fiber optics are supposed to trigger, you know, a light change if there's nothing happening from the other direction, um, but it doesn't really recognize a bicycle or a small uh, vehicle like that. Um, there are programs in other states that, uh, that have identified a process to do that. It's my understanding that PennDOT really hasn't standardized that yet or, or decided on, on how to proceed. It would be, I'm sure, a very, very expensive thing to do mm -hmm. statewide. So we're really well, not in any position now or in the short-term future to provide that. I guess, and also but, to, yeah, go to back up that was also that the reason to do a full-blown inventory of all the signals is to understand, because not every signal is exactly the same. Within the city of Lebanon, there are many signals that it's a it's an automated system. There are no loop detectors in the road to detect somebody pulling up. It's meant to move traffic on Cumberland and Walnut. Um, whereas you have other signals, uh, using an example of Prescott and 422, there are loop detectors in the road, which create a problem where somebody pulls up on Prescott, a lower demand road makes a right-hand turn, trips a loop detector, the light stops, and it stops all the traffic on 422. So at the time, that was probably you know, the right light to have there. Now, as traffic has grown, that's not really the right one. And so we need to understand what is out there and what it is and how do we prioritize that and bring that back to the MPS.